Camels, the cigarette that's first in the service, present the Abbott and Costello program. With the music of Leith Stevens and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes and the Camel Quintet, tonight's guest, Miss Marlena Dietrich, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Costello. Oh, Abbott. Will you stop that noise? What are you doing here in the studio dressed in your bathing suit? Well, I spent all day trying to get my car out of the swimming pool. What was it doing there? Don't you read the papers, Abbott? The government says you have to pool your car. Uh. <laughs> no, you dummy. They mean share the ride. You have to pick up people. Oh, I did that yesterday. I picked up Helen, Mary, Rosie, and Josie. But your car holds more than that. Yeah, but now they only allow you four gals a week. <laughs> you, know, you can't get it. Well, never mind that, Costello. Where have you been all week? What have you been doing? Oh, boy, have I been having fun with Connie Haynes? No kidding. Last Saturday, I took her to a football game. What a game! What excitement! Any passes? No. Her mother was with us. <laughs> and another thing, Abbott, there was a man sitting next to us with a six-month-old baby. All afternoon, the kid was crying. He was so hungry. Well, didn't the father bring a bottle? Yeah, but the kid wanted milk. <laughs> Finally, to shut the kid up, I give him a penny. Well, did that keep him quiet? Yeah, but he kept waving the penny in front of my binoculars. It ruined the game. How did it ruin the game? All afternoon, Lincoln was playing in the backfield. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, forget the football game. Much we... better this afternoon, huh? Yes, 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 a lot better. We've got, we've got other things to worry about. You know, our announcer, Ken Niles, is complaining because he didn't have enough to do last week. Isn't that right, Ken? Yes, it is. <laughs> After all, I could give the program a lift. <laughs> I'm a shot in the arm. You said it. You're a dope. <laughs> now, don't be silly, Costello. Niles is very popular. Why, sure. Right after the broadcast last week, a lot of women chased me up Hollywood Boulevard, and one of them caught me and threw her arms around my neck. I saw that. You did? Yeah. Why did you snatch her pocketbook? <laughs> now, cut it out, Costello. Now, I talked to Ken's wife, and she says uh, he should have more lines. She says he's got talent. She says he's terrific. She says he's colossal. She says this, she says that. I don't care what his wife says. Well, I do. My wife is a wonderful person. She's as necessary to me as, a, as an umbrella in a rainstorm. I'll take the umbrella. It's easier to shut up. No. <laughs> now, why don't you be reasonable, Costello? Mrs. Niles is a very sweet girl. Yes, she is. You know, she's a great deal like Sonia Henney. You mean you have to keep her on ice? <laughs> Please. Are this... you folks hearing us? Now, wait a minute. Just a minute. Now, that isn't fair, Costello. Now, let's get together here. Give Ken a chance to show what he can do. Okay. Well, yeah. Thanks, bud. I, I, I'd like to read a little a tidbit that I could just happen to bring along. Oh, this is going to murder you. Uh, <clears throat> one night as I sat rocking, rocking on my chamber floor, came a knocking, gentle knocking, knocking on my chamber door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. There, how'd you like that? Don't look now, but the raven just laid a name. <laughs> hello, everybody, and uh, hello, my fat little sugar man. Oh, this voice of this kid is temporaneous. Shh, quiet, quiet. Hello, Tommy. <laughs> Mr. Costello, honey, I'd like you and Mr. Abbott to meet someone. This is my Aunt Ruby. Uh, hello, nice to meet you. Hi, Aunt Ruby. How do you like California? Connie doesn't have enough to do. Wait a minute. After all, I... I listened to the program last week, and there should be more music. Connie ought to sing 45 songs. There's nothing but talk on the program. And who wants to hear a lot of talk, 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 talk? Talk, 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 talk. Hold your hat. Here comes another race. After all, Mr. Costello, I taught Connie to sing. Why, even I sang in New York, Philadelphia, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Chicago. What about St. Louis? They beat the Yanks. Ha-ha, ha-ha. I really... Yeah. I really struck you out that time. You struck me out, eh? Mm hmm and you're just the old bat that can do it. Now, yeah! Wait a minute. Now, just a second, Costello. You can't talk like that to Connie's Aunt Ruby. Maybe she's right. Maybe this program needs more singing. Exactly. Everyone loves singing. Something like this. All through the night, there's a little brown but big king. Oh, well, of course. You know I just had my tonsils taken out. Have them put back in. <laughs> 
Costello, what right have you got to criticize? What do you know about singing? Now, look, Abbott, if I hadn't come from such a large family, I'd have been a great singer. What did the large family have to do with it? I could never get in the bathroom. Oh, no. <laughs> come on, Costello, make up your mind. Are you going to give Niles and Connie more to do or not? Why should I? If I give them more to do, the first thing you know, even the sound man will want more to do. And why shouldn't I? What did I have on last week's program? Nothing. Not even a door slam. I understand doors. I know doors inside and out. I talk to doors and they talk to me. Well, what do you hear from the mob? <laughs> ah, well may you laugh. Little do you know how important every little sound is to me. Even the sound of a moth chewing on an overcoat. Like this. What's that funny sound? That's the moth spitting out the buttons. I... <laughs> Don't you think sounds are fascinating? Here is a sample of my day. When work is through, I walk home at night in the rain. I open the door. I go in and shut the door. Then I walk upstairs in the rain. It's raining in the house? Yes, we're waiting for a government ceiling. <laughs> must have a better rider than us, huh? Yeah, I imagine so. I jump into bed and sleep. <laughs> it's morning. What a night! <laughs> I've got to catch the train. I kiss my wife before I go to the office. My wife kisses me. I kiss her and she kisses me. Uh, wait I... a minute. What about the office? With a wife like that, why should he go to the office? <laughs> Lou Costello. Yes, sir. For uh, me? Yeah. Uh, how's your spelling this week? I can spell anything. Okay. Spell crumpets. Crumpets. Yeah, crumpets. Crumpets. Yeah. K? No. no crumpets. C-R-U-M-P-E-S. Uh, oh, wait a minute. You left out the T. Today, I gotta have crumpets without T. Well, why? I lost my sugar ration card. Oh, now, wait a minute. Look, Ration Luke. card. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Ration. Ration. ration or ration. Look, around here, you can't forget any teas. Why not? Well, because with us, it's important. In fact, with any cigarette smoker, T ought to be one of the most important letters in the alphabet. Is that right? Why, sure. T stands for taste and throat. That's anybody's own personal proving ground for cigarettes. The T zone. Now, of course, most people have tried camels. But have you tried them lately since you've been smoking more? Give Camels the T-Zone test now. Ask your taste about Camels flavor. You'll find it wears well, doesn't go flat. Ask your throat about Camels mildness. It's the best judge you can find. Thousands of smokers who are making their own T-Zone test advise Camels suit them to a T. Just remember that you're the one who's doing your smoking. For steady pleasure, try Camels. You'll find they're slow-burning, cooler-smoking, richer-tasting, milder, better. Because camels are expertly and matchlessly blended of costlier tobaccos. So take a tip from your T-Zone. Your throat and your taste will tell you. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels. Get a pack tonight. You'll want to buy a carton tomorrow. Weeps 
Stevens Orchestra with a camel quintet. Doing oh, Abraham from the Holiday Inn. And now, Abbott. ladies and gentlemen... Oh, quiet. Abbott! What's the matter? Hey, look. Look what I got. Look at all the money. Wait a minute, Costello. Where did you get that roll of bills? I went outside for a minute. Just when I reached the corner, a guy ran out of the bank with a bag full of money. And he gave me some. He gave it to you? Mm-hmm. What did he look like? I couldn't tell. He had such a bad cold, he had a handkerchief tied across his nose. <laughs> well, you dumb cluck, that was a mask. The man was a bank robber. Oh, I don't think so, Abbott. He was the president. He offered to sell me the bank for a squawk. Sell you the bank for a squawk? Yeah, he said, one squawk out of you and I'll give you the business. <laughs> of all the dumbbells, why didn't you go into the bank and investigate? I did go in. I want a way to run a business. I walked in and a couple of clerks were playing hide and seek. That's ridiculous. Honest. One guy was hiding in the closet. The other guy was under the counter. There was nobody around to play with him. Then there was another guy. What other guy? He was trying to do tricks. Trying to do tricks? Yeah, he was laying on the floor trying to escape from a lot of ropes. And you thought he was playing a game? Find time to play games, huh? Yeah. Especially when he had a toothache. He didn't have a toothache. No, then why did he have a plaster across his mouth? The man had a gag in his mouth. If he did, he never got a chance to tell it. Oh. <laughs> you should have taken the plaster off his mouth. I did. And right away, a guy started worrying about his... Rationing card. Worrying about his rationing card. Yeah, he started yelling, they took the sugar. They took the sugar. Oh, no, 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 Costello. The man, the man was yelling because he was stuck up. Stuck up? Sure. A fine time to get a swelled head. No. <laughs> Somebody might have robbed the place. He did rob the place. Look, was there anybody with him? Just a woman. A woman? Why didn't you mention her before? She didn't appeal to me. Oh. <laughs> did you pinch her? No. Then you should have held her. If I'd have held her, I'd have pinched her. You idiot. <laughs> a little bit. Do you realize that by keeping the money and letting the crooks get away, you've made yourself an accomplice? Ken Niles, turn on the radio. Maybe we'll get a police report. Hurry up. Okay, bud. Okay. Hey, you hear that, Abbott? What's that? There's a message. Well, what does it say? <laughs> Attention all citizens. The Fifth National Bank has just been held up by Black Pete and his gang of desperate bandits. When last seen, the gang was headed for their hideout at Dead Pan Gulch. Also at large is their accomplice, described as five feet tall. Five feet wide, that is all. That's me, Mr. Five by Five. <laughs> Costello, you know the police are after you. Now, you've got to capture that gang to clear yourself. Uh, now, you can't do it alone, so call a posse. That's the thing. Okay. Here, pushy, pushy, That's... pushy. No, 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 Here, no. Here, pushy. No, Lou, no, please. Dead Pan Gulch is the, in the heart of the cattle country. It's the home of the western bandits and cattle rustlers. Then I'm just a guy, Abbott. I became a three-letter man chasing cattle rustlers. Oh, how could you become a three-letter man chasing cattle rustlers? I sat on a branding iron. <laughs> but did that cause you to catch the rustlers? Catch them? I passed them. <laughs> but this is going to be a long trip. Now, uh, you'll have to get an outfit. What are you going to wear? I'll wear a ten-gallon hat. A tan shirt, a leather belt, and a bloodhound. What pants? The bloodhound. I, no, all right. <laughs> Never mind the outfit. And another thing you lead is a horse. Have you got a horse? Have I got a horse? Yes. I got a horse, and he's my pal. Well, that's swell. I eat with my horse. That's wonderful. I drink with my horse. I even sleep with my horse. You sleep with your horse? I got it. It's his blanket. <laughs> now, tell me, can you ride a horse? Sure, I can ride a horse. One time, Abbott, I rode two horses at once, standing up. Mm -hmm. I had my right foot on one horse, my left foot on the other horse. All of a sudden, we came to a fork in the road. Each horse went in a different direction. That was a laugh. Yeah, I thought I'd split. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind. The first, thing, the first thing you have to do is find the bandit's trail. When you do, you leap into the saddle and away you go. Your face is stern, your grip is sure, your clutch is firm. How's my transmission? All right, I'll ask you. Please be quiet. Then you ride. You ride out across the prairie. You ride for hours and hours on end. That sounds logical. Don't interrupt, please. <laughs> you ride and you ride until your trousers are worn thin. Finally, there you are. I knew I'd come through. Yeah. <laughs> well, Costello, what are you going to do? Are you going out after the bandits? Are you going to clear your name? I'm going to clear my name, Abbott. a boy. I'll do it. I knew it was in you. I'm going to get it out of me right now. Come on. I'll get them, bandits. But just tell me one thing. If I get killed, what's going to happen to that little fellow that depends on me? The poor little fellow won't get anything to eat anymore. That poor little fellow won't even have a roof over his head. If anything happens, Abbott, it'll kill him. The poor little fellow. Costello, who is the poor little fellow? Me? <laughs> Haynes with a 
Campbell Quintet to sing a new tune of the Old West, Cow Cow Boogie. Out on the plains, down near Santa Fe, I met a cowboy riding the range one day, and as he jogged along, I heard him singing a most peculiar cowboy song. It was a ditty he learned in the city. Come a tell ya ya, come a tell you to I get along, get hip, let us go, get, get along. Better be on your way, get along. The old fair way Singing his cow cow boogie In the strangest way Come a ta ya ya Come a ta yip to the eye Singing his cowboy song He's just too much He's got a knocked out western accent With a Harlem touch He was raised on local weed He's what you call Singing his cow cow boogie in the strangest way. Come a tie ya ya, come a tie yip to the eye. Singing his cowboy song, he's just too much. He's got a knocked up western accent. With a Harlem touch, he was raised on local weed. He's what you call swing at free. And now, back to the adventures of our heroes, Abbott and Costello, as we find them hot on the trail of the bank bandit, Black Pete. Leading a posse of men, they track the villain to the lawless town of Deadpan Gulch. Here they are, riding up the main street of the town. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, 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 hey, jingle. What's wrong? What's wrong? One of my spurs got stuck. <laughs> Costello, what do you think you're doing? Why are you riding underneath your horse? Well, my horse isn't feeling well, Abbott. And the doctor told me to watch his stomach. <laughs> well, here we are, men. We'll probably find Black Pete in the Red Dog Cafe across the street. Stop your horses. Okay. Whoa! Whoa, Whoa, boy! Whoa! Atta boy. Take it easy, Nelly. Uh, Sit down now. Whoa, Nelly. All right, men. Everybody into the bar for a drink. Now, now! Just a man! You horses stay outside. (laughs) All right, let's go in. And listen, Costello. When we go through this door, have your gun ready. If anybody moves, shoot. If anybody shoots, I'll move. Hey, Abbott, listen to that. What a pair of pipes. Wish I was a plumber. Costello, don't you recognize her? She's the toast of dead pan gulch. Really? Oh, Marlena Dietrich. Oh. Oh, oh. So, look at that lovely face. That face has made a fortune. Yeah, it runs into a nice figure. <laughs> Hello, boys. Hello, boys. How big are men where you come from? <laughs> Welcome to the Red Dog Cafe. Did you like my song? What do you think of my range? Your range is lovely. In fact, I like your whole kitchen. <laughs> so you flatter me. You're probably tired after your long trip. How about a drink? Okay. I'll have a Crosby cocktail. What's that? One drink and then bing. <laughs> With your personality, I would suggest straight corn. <laughs> what a fresh kid. 
Just a minute, Marlena. You see, neither one of us is a drinking man. Do you have anything a, a little milder? I try a drink of this very mild wine. Now, that sounds better. I'll try it. <laughs> Just a minute. What's, what's the matter? I don't understand. That wine is made here by the Hoppy Indians. <laughs> Hoppy Indians? One of the Indians are still hopping in it. <laughs> Costello, that's silly. Come on. Let's go over and watch the boys play roulette. Yes. Or perhaps you both would rather play a game with me. Poker, faro, blackjack. I'd rather play post office. But that's a kid's game. Not the way I play it. <laughs> You know, little fat man, I could go for someone like you. You could? Yes. Do you know someone? Sure. I... <laughs> what a fresh kid, I bet. Now, look, keep quiet, Costello. Don't talk like that to Marlena. She may know where Black Pete is. Try to win her confidence. Turn on the charm, you know. I'll turn on the charm. Okay, watch me. Marlena, my love, I adore you. You do? Yeah. <laughs> Marlena, will you let me be your slave? Will you let me do something for you that I have never done for any other woman? What's that? Will you let me press your slacks? <laughs> Costello, will you stop that? You just don't know how to handle these Western girls. Oh, yes, I do, Abbott. Marlena, one time I was in love with a bull-legged cowgirl. She was too bull-legged to round up the kettle. What do you mean? Well, she had a terrible time getting her calves together. <laughs> what are you talking about, Costello? You've never even been in love with a girl. Yes, I was. I can see her now. She always wore cotton stockings. Cotton stockings? What happened to her? Nothing. <laughs> but of all the girls I got tattooed on my chest... On your chest? Marlena, I love you the best. The best? Better than the rest. The rest? In the West. The West? On my chest. On your chest? There's an echo in the joint. <laughs> well, there's no question about it, Costello. Marlena Dietrich just can't be bothered with a man like you. Marlena, is that true? Oh, Lou. If you only had the eyes of Clark Gable. Yes. The nose of Tyron Power. Yes, yes. The chin of Gary Cooper. Yes. The face. The face of who? That's all. If you only had a face. You know, the kids get nursed. Now, look here, Costello. We're wasting time. Did you forget why we came to Deadpan Gulch? We've got to find Black Pete's hideout. Black Pete? He's the most dangerous character in these parts. Oh, he don't bother me. But he's very tough. He eats little men like you every morning when he gets up. That's me, the breakfast of champions. <laughs> but, Lou, why don't you give up this mad search? It can only lead to your death. I think you got something there, kid. Hey, Abbott, I am scared. Ain't you scared? No, I'm not scared. Then why are you biting my nails? <laughs> but no matter what happens, I'm going after Black Pete, Marlena. And if I die, I want you to take this shirt of mine as a keepsake. But suppose you don't die. Then wash it and have it back by Monday. <laughs> and no starch in the collar, either. Listen, Costello, cut out the foolishness. Now we line up everybody in the room until we find our man. That's right, Abbott. Everybody line up and empty out your pockets. Why are you making them empty their pockets? I lost my yo-yo. Now, wait a minute, boys. It's not necessary to look any further. I am Black Pete. You are? What a fresh kid! What a stale plot. I think you got something there. Marlena, I still don't believe all this is true. It is true. I took the money from the bank, but I did not steal it. It was my own money. It was my pin money. A hundred thousand dollars pin money? I have very expensive pins. <laughs> if you don't believe me, I'll show you. Mm. I have all the money right here in my stocking. Look. Abbott, what a cute bank. What a place to make a deposit. <laughs> oh, Marlena, if I give you all my money from the bank, will you put it in your other stocking? Certainly. Costello, don't be an idiot. Your money is safer in the bank. Why do you want to put it in her stocking? Because that's where it's going to draw the most interest. (laughs) 
Before we hear from Abbott and Costello again, do you want to find out how hitting ground feels to a paratrooper? Well, just hop off the top of a truck going 15 miles an hour. But don't try that until you're as husky as an all-American halfback and as nimble as a circus tumbler. Even then, you'd have to learn plenty to qualify for the shoot troops, fighters as tough as any in the world. And whether your job is to dangle in midair from silk cords or whether you're making the shoots, you want to get the most out of your off-duty moments. Take Helen Lynch, for instance. She works at the Pioneer Parachute Company, making some of the shoots used by our paratroopers. Like so many of us, Miss Lynch is smoking more these days, and she sticks to camels. She said, quote, Package after package, camels never tire my taste or wear out their welcome. They have such a rich, full flavor, and they're so easy on my throat. Unquote. Camel is first in the service. Actual sales records in post exchanges and canteens show that with men in the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard, Camel is the favorite. Why is that? Well, just ask your own throat and taste. Camels have a full, rich flavor, the kind that wears well, doesn't go flat. Camels are milder, too, and cooler smoking because they're slow burning. The big reason behind this camel goodness is costlier tobaccos, Blended in the years-old camel tradition of quality tobacco blending. If you're smoking more these days, try camels. Your throat and your taste will tell you. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels. Get a pack tonight. Send the carton to that fellow in the service. a word about next week's program. You'll hear more music from Leith Stevens and the orchestra, more songs by Connie Haynes and the Camel Quintet, and a gripping, dramatic story of life in the squared circle with our guest star, John Garfield. Now, here is a short preview of next week's program. Thousands of people are assembled in Madison Square Garden. All eyes are focused on the two fighters in the center of the ring, Killer Garfield and Cupie Costello. There is a terrific exchange of blows. The crowd is on its feet. Costello is on his face. One, Costello, two, Costello, get up. Three, get up. Get up off your knees and quit playing with those marbles. What marbles? I'm picking up my feet. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next Thursday night at the same time for another big comedy show starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with John Garfield as our guest. Brought to you with the compliments of Camel Cigarettes. Camel presents three great radio shows each week. Abbott and Costello on Thursday night. On Friday night, it's the Camel Caravan with Lanny Ross, Herb Schreiner, Xavier Cougat, and Our Town. And Monday night, Blondie. Marlena Dietrich, who appeared with us tonight, has just completed a new universal picture, Pittsburgh, with John Wayne and Randolph Scott. And here's the latest news about the Camel Caravans, those swell traveling shows that entertain our boys in the Army camps. Fifteen Army and Navy training stations will be visited this week, including Camp Gordon, Georgia, Camp Pendleton, California, and Camp Croft, South Carolina. This is Ken Niles speaking for the makers of Camel Cigarettes. And wishing you all a very pleasant good night. Ever see a pipe wearing a muzzle? No, sir, and you never will, because that won't keep it from biting. Thing to do is get Prince Albert, the brand that's no bite treated for real smoke in comfort. Another thing... PA's crimp cut, and that means it packs firm and easy and gives you cool one-match burning. You'll find around 50 mild, rich-tasting pipe folds in every handy pocket package of Prince Albert. Try PA for pipe appeal. You'll agree it's the national joy smoke. This program has come to you from Hollywood.